St. Joseph's. I'm the Reverend Mother Cassinda Ellis. St. Joseph's is an Episcopal church in the heart of Queens Village with a vibrant community dedicated to putting God's words into action. Our church community is a family that comes together every Sunday for worship and fellowship, which is why I am so happy that you could join us. Thank you, and please continue to follow us on our webpage or on Facebook. Have a blessed day. Where is the Messiah to be born? 
they told him in Bethlehem of Judah, for so it has been written by the prophets, and you, Bethlehem, and the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had, been, had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by the way of another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Pinder's 
60th anniversary to the priesthood. Now, me personally, I'm just trying to make it to 30 years again. 60 years is above and beyond the call of duty. But once a priest, always a priest. And so at the, 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 uh, at the, uh, during the sermon, he was reflecting on the, the, my favorite gospel, my favorite chapter, John chapter 1, in the beginning was God, and with God, God was the word, you know, all of that fun stuff. And he, he was talking about the fact that, that not only in that t context of that, that, that text, you have also, there was a man named John who came to testify to the light. And he was encouraging those who were there and those who were listening to the sermon that John came to be a witness and that the world needs more witnesses in, in, in today. And so he was speaking about it in the sense that we are living in some interesting and trying times. We are on the verge of something, right? And, I, and I'm not sure what that something is. I want to I wanna believe and hope that if that something is about God's goodness, and, and, and that's where I want to stand. But the world wants more to stand in the fact are that darkness, right? Because in God, John's gospel, we also learn that the light was in the world and darkness could not overcome it. And so with all the interesting news that we have heard throughout this week, Beginning from last Sunday, where we, we, we came home and discovered that, that or another congregation was gathering, right? And a couple of people lost their lives. To now we are ending the week with, are we on the brink of war again? We have to remember the text that John says, that the light came into the world and darkness could not overcome it. And so we come back to the wise men. The wise men are looking for something. They're looking for someone. They're looking for the Messiah. And they come to the place where they believe the Messiah should be or to the people who they believe to know where the Messiah has been born, and the people do not know. Remember again in John, what did he say? Jesus came to his own, and they knew him not. And so here the three wise men have left their country. We don't know what country they're coming from, but they've left everything to follow a star in the hopes that they will see the Messiah. And so as they are looking for the Messiah, they're also showing us what witness is about. Because witness is about leaving our homes. Witness is about leaving our comfort zones to go to the highways and the byways to find Jesus in the other. Now that might be difficult. Because Bishop Curry would say that we all can go to worship, right? We all come on Sunday mornings. Worship is pretty easy. We wake up in the morning. At the bare minimum, we brush our teeth and head on to church. And it's easy to witness in this coming, come to a church and worship in this, in this, in this state, in the, um, in the United States, because we're not having anyone trying to kill us to come and worship here, I, even though Sunday happens. For the most part, we can all come and worship freely at any church we want to at any time. So worship is easy in this country, but to witness, that might be a little bit difficult. Because remember what I said, witnessing means leaving our homes, leaving our comfort zone to go in search of Christ in the other. 
And we might encounter some Herods along the way. Because the thing about Herod, he was not looking for the Messiah to pay homage. What was he looking for the Messiah to do? To kill him, right? To witness risk going to people who might kill you, maybe not physically, but emotionally because they don't want to hear about God, about the light, about Messiah. They don't want to know about the light that lives inside of them. Witnessing is not an easy task. But I ask myself the question over and over, and I ask you, if we were witnessing as Christians, Right? If we were witnessing as worshiping Christians who come on Sunday, every Sunday, sometimes Wednesday, if we have Holy Week, you're there for the entire week, then every time we come into church as worshiping people, if we were as faithful to, the, to worshiping as we or, or, or witnessing as we were to worshiping, how would this world be? Would we really be on the verge of war? Because to witness means I have to seek the light of Christ in other people. And if I'm seeking the light of Christ in other people, that means I'm loving them as is. Can you love people as is? You a question in that one. Can you love people as is? You should, right? We are, most of us live in the world of, yes, we should, but we don't, right? We live in a world where we love with conditions. And once you fit the conditions, I can love you freely and easily and everything and above. But the moment you step out of those conditions, I can no longer love you as is. And the reason why I say this, I wonder about the people who enter into churches and create these mass shootings or the mass shootings all over the place. I wonder if we would love them as is and show love people as is, would they need to rely on such extreme measures? If we can love the world as is, as the Christian nation we claim to be, Right? The United States claims to be the Christian nation. So if we could love people as is, would we be in wars and other places around the world? Or would we just be focused on doing humanitarian acts of loving you as is? You don't have to fit into our mold and our understanding of how to be as human beings. When the, when the wise men left their country, they weren't looking for the Messiah based on the conditions that they thought. They just went looking for the light of Christ, wanting to know where it is. And they didn't care whom they asked. They just wanted to know, where is the light? The people who they encountered, some of them were curious enough to want to probably follow them. And most people, or well, others, like Herod, were frightened. Because if we go to the light, that means I have to let go of control. I have to let go of power. And we live in a world thirsting for power that doesn't belong to them. The power belongs to God. And we can have all of the world's power, but we will never have the power to bring life and death and to restore that life like God can. We're called to witness. Witness like those wise men. To get up out of our comfort zone and to go into the highways and the byways of life and to love people as is. Imagine if you were loved as is. Right? Nobody cares about the mistakes you made. Nobody cares whether you are, well, I mean, they, they care whether you're a nice person or not. Let's just put it that way. But even if you were the worst person, they're just like, you know, I don't love you as is. I had a friend, I had some friends that, some, that was difficult. Was, <coughs> she's a difficult person. And people have asked me time and time, how in the goodness do you deal with that person? They're too difficult, stubborn, sometimes rude, sometimes just oblivious to everybody else's needs. Why are you loving them 
come, Cassandra, they say. Because I said, that's the way they were made and built. I love them as is. And in return, they love me as is. And so it makes me want to be a better person. And that person sometimes does better because I'm, they're looking at me and they realize, oh, wait, let me change. I think that when we love people for who they are right in front of us in the moment, they will want to change to do better. But when you come at it as a judgment as to why are you wearing those shoes? Why are you wearing these sneakers? Why are you having your hair looking like this? Why is your pants down to the ground? Though your pants should be up here. We could go on and on as to all the things that we say to people. Why are you talking like that? Why are you talking to this person? Why are you sitting on this side of the pew? Why are you not sitting all over there? These are all the things that we come at people with. The judgment. But if we came like the wise men who had no judgment, just wanting to know a simple question, where's the Messiah? Where's the Messiah? That's all I want to know. I don't care if you're king. I don't care if you're a pauper. Just tell me where the Messiah is. And you go to the person that you've been judging on. Where's the Messiah? I don't care if you're the, my boss. I don't care if you're the bum on the, in the, in the um, subway. I just want to know where the Messiah is. It's really looking for where the Messiah is in you. <clears throat> Can you imagine if we lived in a world with no judgment? We wouldn't be living in fear. We wouldn't be worrying about every time that door opens. Who's coming in? I mean, I sit, you know, we sit up here. We see everybody coming in. And there's a little always in me this just instinct that says, who's that person? I don't know who that person is. Right? Someone just came in this door, and I was like, who that? You guys didn't see. <laughs> and I was wondering, I was like, well, well, you know, because we live in that type of world. And it's not easy to let go of that thought process. Even as I was preaching, I was like, who is that person coming through the door? Right? But at the end of the day, I was like, oh, well, come in, come out. If they come in, it's good. If they don't, oh, well. Either way, I'm going to love them just as is. We have to move beyond the fear of getting to know the other and search for the light of Christ in them. Because John says the light is always going to win outside of the darkness. And if we can show others the way, if we can be like the, 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 the wise men and leave our comfort zone to do ministry, to witness to God, we won't be afraid of whether or not we're hinging on World War III, because that's really what we're all wondering. Right? That's what's sitting in the back of our minds. Are we entering into another world war? But if we focus on just witnessing and loving people the best way we can, and teaching others to love the best way they can, Maybe, just maybe, we will be able to change the tide. We have to pray for the world. We have to believe that human beings in this world are better than what we are displaying right now. We have to believe that our leadership will be able to do the right thing right now. We just have to. Because if the moment we stop believing, and hoping that God is in control, I don't know where we're going to be. I don't know what kind of world we're going to live in. But all I know is that hope tells me that God is always in control. And when I don't understand, I can still lean on God's understanding. And that as long as the light of Christ lives inside of me, the darkness will never win over. And we have to live that, not only speaking it with words, but living it in our lives. Even if we enter into World War 24. Alright? We still have to know that the light of Christ shines brightly. And so we're called to witness out in the world. And this 2020, and this new decade, and whatever it is you want to call it, let's start and do something new. Let's get out of our comfort zones, and let's be witnesses to Christ 
out into the world. Amen.
God, we give you thanks for the service. Thank you for bringing us to another year of 2020. We pray that in this year that we will draw closer to you, that our lights will shine bright out into the world, that we will be witnesses to your love and grace in this world, and to change the tide that be in love. Show love as the way and the only way. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.